Hey guys, I'm Chad Hoover. Welcome to today's video. We're going to talk about selecting a fishing rod. Actually, the things you should take into account when selecting a bass rod. So one of the more popular questions I get in DMs, uh, in comments, in emails is, hey, what's the best bass fishing rod? Uh, it's kind of funny that I get that question a lot because there is no best bass fishing rod, but I, I think I know what people are trying to say. And I think sometimes technique specific rods really confuse some people. And I think people get overwhelmed by thinking they have to have a rod for every specific technique. But it really boils down to understanding what makes a fishing rod, what are the, the characteristics you should take into account. And then from there, you can determine what rod works best for you. Uh, I think that there's certain things that work best with each technique, and that's what we're going to talk about. So if I had to pick one bass fishing rod, and you don't want to watch this video all the way through, and you want to cut to the chase, and you're one of those instant gratification people, I will tell you that the best rod on the market in any brand is the one I'm holding right here as far as an all-around rod. That is a seven-foot, medium-heavy, moderate action rod. That is the ATV of fishing rods, if you will. I like to pair that with the middle of the road action. When I say middle of the road, not super slow, not like a five, five to one gear ratio, which is gonna have slow, you know, um, gear retrieve or line retrieve and a, and a lower gear, but a lot of torque or a super fast gear ratio, like an eight, three to one, that's gonna have a really high retrieve rate, but low torque. So again, if you're an instant gratification person, you just want the answer to the test ahead of time, seven foot, medium heavy, moderate action is gonna be the way to go. Now, if you want to know why, hang out and watch, watch the rest of the video. So here's a couple of things that I think a lot of people overlook when it comes to selecting a fishing rod. A lot of people I hear interchange the word power and action incorrectly. I hear people all the time say, that's a moderate power, or that is a medium action. Those are backwards. So let's talk about the parameters as it pertains to rods and what makes a specific rod design. And then from there, I think you'll be better suited to select your own fishing rod for the techniques that you need based on the, the things that you want to accomplish. So let me jump in, jump right into that. So your things that you need to remember, I like to say is LPA, length, power, and action. Your length is a, is a factor of, is a function of leverage. How much leverage do you want? By and large, the longer the rod is, the more casting you're gonna have, the more casting distance you're gonna have, the more leverage you're gonna have for hook sets and for line take up, the more control you're gonna have on the fish. But as a general rule, a longer rod is less accurate and a shorter rod is more accurate. Now, I know that there's the guy or gal out there that's gonna go, shoot, boy, even with a seven foot six rod, I can put it right in there, and you can. I'm just saying in a, as a general rule of thumb, the further the distance is from your hand to the tip of the rod, inherently, you're less accurate. The closer the tip of the rod is to your hand, the more inherently accurate you are, right? And so if you're looking for a compact rod to make pinpoint cast, if you're looking to skip under bushes and docks, especially if you're sitting in a kayak, you should probably get in that sub seven foot range, 6'6", six, 6'9", six, 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 I'm a big fan of a 6'10". I very seldom go shorter than that anymore, but a 6'10 for me is like a little sniper rifle. It is super accurate. It's super fun. It actually makes it more fun even catching smaller fish. So I love those for spinner baits in the creeks, small crank baits, things along those lines. But by and large, I'm seven foot or longer because I like that line take up. I like that leverage. Uh, I like the ability to uh, angle, you know, change angles and control the fish. So that's length. For the sake of simplicity, length is about leverage. It's about casting accuracy and it's about how much um, distance you're going to get out of your cast, how much line you're going to pick up in your hook set or when it comes to changing angles on the fish. So length is leverage, length is line recovery, and just think of it like that, and length is accuracy. Power. Now power is the stiffness of the rod, how you know strong that rod is and how deep it bends you know is more of a factor of action. So we're going to talk about it like this. Remember LPA, length, power, action. Now power is not action. Power is medium, medium heavy, heavy, extra heavy, uh, not even below medium. It could be, um, you know, medium light. It could be extra light. So power is how stiff or how strong the rod is. Length and power 
don't always go together. You can have a seven foot medium rod, you can have a seven foot medium heavy rod, you can have a seven foot heavy rod, you can have a seven foot extra heavy. But length and power really go together when it comes to combined leverage. For example, if you have a seven foot six, you're probably not gonna have a seven foot six medium light unless that's some kind of float and fly or you know drifting presentation or something that's done primarily for salmon. But for the most part, what we're talking about is when you get into length and you've got a seven foot six rod and you've got probably a medium heavy or above, in most cases you're gonna have a heavy or even an extra heavy because with that longer rod, you're looking for leverage and you're looking for that heavier power to pull fish out of deep cover, to leverage them away from things. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense to have a six foot extra heavy rod. You know, that's a boat rod for saltwater fishing. That's something for vertical jigging. But if you think of your power, right, your power is how much pressure you can put on the rod before that rod is no longer viable. Meaning with a with the medium light, there's only so much power I can put on that rod before I exceed the capabilities of the rod. So power is how much power, if you think about it like that, how much power you can put into the rod. That doesn't necessarily always translate to a specific technique. Power is how much pressure you want to be able to put on the rod. So just remember power is pressure. It's how much pressure you can put on that rod and it still performs. Okay, now let's talk about action. Action is what the rod does when you're making your retrieve, after you hook the fish, when you're loading it for the cast. And for the most part, the action is about what the transition of the rod is. How deep does the rod bend? How fast the rod loads and unloads or resets? And so for the most part, when I recommended the best all around rod in this video, and I said that you would want a seven foot length, a medium heavy power, and a moderate action, moderate is gonna be that thing that splits the difference. It's gonna be a rod that's slow enough to use for crankbaits and, and chatterbaits and spinnerbaits and things along those lines, but it's gonna be a rod that's fast enough if you wanted to set the hook on a jig, a soft plastic or some of those other techniques so it's that good middle of the road. Now, if you wanted a technique specific crankbait rod, for example, you would want a rod that's a little slower and if you wanted a rod for something like jig fishing, you would probably want a rod that's a little more sensitive where only the, the tip of the rod bends and it's also a little bit faster to reset. Now, take a bait like a crankbait. You set the hook on a fish with a crankbait, it tears a hole in the mouth. If that rod doesn't have a deeper kind of parabolic bend to it, if that fish jumps and shakes its head, that rod doesn't have that shock absorber effect to allow that bait to stay pinned with a jig a soft plastic or things along those lines, you generally set the hook and you're staying in contact with that lure and you're keeping that fish pinned and you're not really normally tearing as big a hole and you're really staying more in contact with that lure so that fish doesn't have the advantage because the rod is acting like a shock absorber in the case of a, of a crankbait. It's acting like a shock absorber in the case of a bladed jig, uh, a spinner bait. Um, you know, in any of those hard baits, I like a little bit softer rod, any rod or, or any lure presentation that I'm doing a constant retrieve, I like the rod to have a little bit slower action so that it creates a preload. Meaning uh, if you're reeling a spinnerbait, you'll feel that steady load. If you're reeling a crankbait, you kind of feel that steady load. Uh, the one exception to that is if you're fishing jerk baits, you're gonna snap, snap and kind of go slack. So fishing a jerk bait, you're gonna think of it as snap, snap, slack. You're gonna go slack on that line, which allows that bait to rise, back up, turn, roll, and it really triggers strikes. Again, that is still gonna be a more moderate action. You're not gonna do that on a fast action rod. So any presentation that you're gonna maintain contact with the lure throughout the presentation, you're gonna to wanna to fish a more moderate action. The lure that you're gonna constantly maintain contact with, you're gonna to wanna to use a more moderate action. Just remember that. Now, those presentations where you're gonna come out of contact with the lure, Let's say we're throwing a jig out and we're letting it fall to the bottom. You're not 100% in contact with that lure. If you're gonna drag, 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 and then put a little slack in the line, remember, you're not now in contact with that lure. That lure is laying there or that lure is falling on a slack line. That is something that I like to use a faster action, a, a medium fast, extra fast, fast, or extra fast. So medium fast, fast, or extra fast. So those, those situations where I'm using 
uh, a presentation where I'm gonna come out of contact. In other words, it's not a steady retrieve, something that I'm hop, hop, stop, hop, hop, stop, or like a worm that I'm letting fall to the bottom and I'm dragging it and then letting it sit, or I'm dragging it and letting it sit. Something like a Cinco, where I'm letting that lure fall and the fish is gonna pick it up on the fall or gonna pick it up when it hits the bottom or pick it up after a twitch. I like a faster action rod for that. So by and large, the purpose of this video was to talk about the differences between length, power, and action. The length is about leverage, line take up. The power is about pressure and how much pressure you can put on the fish. And the action is about what action that that rod imparts on the lure or how it responds on the hook set. If I'm fishing a preloaded lure, like a spinnerbait, a crankbait, a chatterbait, bladed jig, any of those kind of lures, I want that preload. That way when the fish hits it, it just loads the rod up a little bit more. I can set the hook slightly and then just keep reeling. I don't necessarily have to do a big hook set and then try to catch back up. So I don't have to do that. With a fast action rod, a lot of times you're gonna set the hook and then you're gonna reel down and stay caught up to that fish because you're gonna have to set the hook to take up line because that fish was picking up a lure that was fished on a slack line or a lure that you were out of contact with. So. Let's do a quick run through. Length, power, action. They are all intertwined. They all work together. So you have to decide how much line take up do I need? How much distance do I wanna cover on my cast? How deep a water am I fishing in? By and large for me, the deeper the water, the longer the rod. The shallower the water, the shorter the rod. Pretty simple. Think about how long the rod is and how deep the water is. They should, by and large, kinda of go together. I very seldom ever fish a really short rod in really deep water and I very, very seldom ever fish a super long rod in stupid shallow water, unless I'm fishing a frog, a topwater bait, or I'm out in a stump field covering a lot of water. Uh, but if I'm in a back creek and I'm kinda, you know, it's compact, it's tight, I really like to make pinpoint casts, I'm gonna go to a shorter rod. If I'm in open water, I'm gonna go to a longer rod. So length, longer rods, open water, deeper water, shorter rods, more compact, pinpoint presentations, uh, power, um, any of my power fishing techniques, I'm gonna be medium heavy or heavier. Any of my finesse techniques, I'm gonna be medium heavy or lighter, with the exception of some stuff like big worming. I still consider that a finesse technique. And in that case, if I'm fishing deep, I might be fishing a long rod and I might be fishing a heavy power because I wanna set the hook and be able to get that fish out of there. So you have to think about what I want the lure to do, what I want the fish to do, and then what do I wanna accomplish with my presentation? And that will tell you your best length, power, and action combination. Guys, we'll get into more specific um, length, power, action combinations, which ones work best for which techniques, but I wanted to take a second to tell you about the number one all-around rod, or what I think is the number one all-around rod for bass fishing, that seven foot length, that medium heavy in power, and that moderate in action. But we'll get way more in depth, way more specific in upcoming videos. Do me a favor, leave a comment in the comment section below, smash that thumbs up button. And if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you really wanna get geared up, be sure to head over to Fish USA. Links to special deals and promos are in the description box. And don't forget to sign up for their newsletter so you stay in touch and you're always up to speed on the specials and promotions and giveaways and all the stuff that they're doing. So anyway, head down to the description box, check out their newsletter. Uh, be sure to subscribe to all their social media handles so you know what's going on and uh, we'll see y'all in the next video.